Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I hope you're doing well. My name is Sherrard. I'm the host of the show. I'm a little down because my Bears just got whooped, ladies and gentlemen. They got whooped pretty bad in the playoffs, but I need you all to help cheer me up so that we can have, have something to look forward to. Uh, today's episode on the show is entitled, It's a Tough Business, But Someone Has to Do It. We have two individuals, uh, both actors, um, both business people doing big, big things in the industry. I'm so excited. But the thing that makes it more special is they're also friends of mine. I've worked with them um, in Chicago, and they have captivated millions with their acting ability. And we're going to talk to them about the ups and downs of the industry, as well as how they were able to persevere in the midst of people telling them they couldn't do it, or even telling them to give up on their dreams. The Sherrod Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever had missed the, the Sherrod Show on Essence Television or Comcast NBC, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. We have some of the biggest artists and guests on there from Rick Ross, the Isley Brothers, to Smokey Robinson, Jerry Butler, you name it, have stopped by the Sherrod Show. So if you miss it on Essence Television, you can always, always listen to it on iHeartRadio. And then it's also on your monitor, brought to you by my new network, Essence TV where you can see the episodes like this one live, just type in Essence, E-S-S-E-N-S-E TV to see all of the greatest episodes of your life. And coming soon, the episode of Mike Tyson being on the show. You can't wait to, I can't wait to see, oh, I hope you can't wait to see that interview as well on the show. Well. show. <laughs> now um, off to the show, ladies and gentlemen, this first young lady, she has been an actress for many years. She's still very young. Um, she is an artist as well. She can rap. Unlike me, she can rap more than just Christmas gifts. And then she's also great at what she does. She's just recently relocated to Atlanta and she stopped by the Sherrard Show to share some of her wisdom. Mrs. Roche Chi-Town, how are you, young lady? I am blessed. I cannot complain. And I want to thank you for thinking of us and allowing me to be on this platform. You're such a wonderful person. You always reach back. And I really do appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. Just so glad to have you on the show. And then this gentleman here, um, he is the alpha man um, on The Seven Shades of Man. And he's a dynamic actor. He's a humble gentleman. And he just celebrated his birthday. Now, the thing that's so special about his birthday, his birthday is the same day as my late mom, January 8th, as well as um, R. Kelly, as well as Elvis Presley. He shares the same birthday. And he's been partying it up all this weekend. He stopped by the Sherrard Show just to talk about his career as well as the festivities. Mr. McKenzie Holmes, how are you, sir? I'm so thankful to be here. I'm great. Uh, I'm very professional. So I, I knew to cut the party down because the show is important. And so I'm professional and I'm here and I'm glad that you uh, got me aboard. Love you, man. Love you. It's same here, Mackenzie. It goes right back at you. Now, I'm going to start off with you first, Roche. Now, Roche, you've been in the industry for many years, um, seeing its ups and downs, um, particularly in Chicago. When did you get your first start as being an artist and actress? And what was the thing that inspired you most? Uh, my first start was in the Chicago Sun-Times. They posted a, a, a ad stating that they needed people that can look like high school students because they filmed Save the Last Dance. So I submitted my photo and I was allowed to be on set. And then one of the producers pulled me over to the side and told me to go stand by the locker. And I'm standing by the locker. And then Another young lady is standing by the locker with me and we're just standing by the locker and Carrie Washington walks over to me and she's like, thank you so much, beautiful. And I'm like, you're welcome. You know, and I'm still just standing by the locker. And then the producer, he's like, hey, hey, Roche, come here. And I walked over and he goes, okay, so you're the stand in. And I'm like, stand in what? He's like, oh, you're going to be the stand in for Carrie Washington. So once I was on that set, this was like in December of 1999. In January of 2000, I was in LA because that moment of just being on set with Carrie Washington and just watching her and learning from her, her humility, her talent, I went to LA and I just got in it. I just, I dove right into acting. Then I've been into rapping and then I started writing, producing, directing and putting my own shows out and now I'm a talent scout 
for VXD Management, as well as a creative director for Dakota TV, which is on Roku as well. We're going to talk more about that. She's a heck of a businesswoman, heck of a mogul. She's doing some big things. Right. But let me correct something, though, now, Roche. In 1999, weren't you in fifth grade? Okay, we'll move on to you, Mackenzie. Now, <laughs> this man um, as well, first of all, he's cleaner than the Board of Health. And he's been um, doing it for a bit now. I first met him um, doing the Alpha Man. Now, was it the Alpha Man that, that bit you to make you say, let's do this? Or what was it, Mackenzie, that got the, got the blood flowing as being an actor? Now, funny, uh, I was walking down the street one day and my, my baby's mother, she called me. She said, uh, I'm getting married. So I was like, ah, oh, man, is there anything I could do? She was like, no. So I hung up and I said, God, you know, I'm tired of all these relationships. I just need something. I, I appreciate working at the post office, but I need something and I need it now. And that was the first time God ever answered me right then and there. What he did was this little boy came out the, out the house. He said, man, I know you. I'm like, I play basketball and post, man, I roller skate. And the others said, that's the guy in the movie. I'm like, what movie? So I went to see Eddie Griffin, uh, Dysfunctional Family. So I go see it, and, cause I went to see the concert and they had filmed it, but I'm not even in the front or nothing. But before it comes on the frame, one frame, my whole face, I was like, God, is this what you want me to do? And so, and me not being a good reader, never thinking I want to be on front of the stage and nothing like that. I'm like, you sure you want me to do this? But you, hey, you asked me for something. So, okay, we had this conversation. So I went on and did it. And so with everything, because God gave me this, there's no way nobody else can take this away from me. And I, I just believe in myself. And whenever my time comes, like when I finally got on the shot, I mean, it was my time. When I did the commercial for McDonald's, it, it was my time, you know, and I put it in the work. I was professional and I knew that not being a good reader, I had to learn how to read. So I started reading better and reading or learning my lines before I even get there. So I'm off book most of the time when I get there just to make sure I can have the continuity with everybody else. Cause if I'm not reading good, I can't read with them. So, you know, if I know my little shortcomings. I have to, you know, do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Now, so now that was my thing. Now, Mackenzie, you started, um, most people like started like when they were eight, nine or in their teenage years, you started rather late in your career, is that about, correct? About 37. 37 years okay. old. Now we have a picture of you with the Jerry Curl at 37. Is that, no, okay. <laughs> now, now, now for you, Roche, let me kick it to you for a minute. Now, um, the industry is not a tough industry because people, now they're blowing the comments up already. Um, we'll get to the questions in a moment. But now Roche, people, um, oftentimes see all the glory of you being on a big screen and Kerry Washington and all these things, but they don't know that it's a business. Now, what were some of the struggles you had to go to uh, being an actor, being an artist, uh, being in the industry? Uh, one of the main things in Chicago was it wasn't to me a lot of auditions because most of the people that will come to Chicago to film, they were from LA or New York and they were like already casted. So you just really had to like focus on studying and honing your craft. Like I took classes at Vagabond, the acting, the on-camera courses. I also graduated recently from Illinois Media School. So I learned radio broadcasting and television because I really wanted to learn editing, the editing process, because it's so much fun to do the film where you're on the set, but people don't know there's so much that goes into the pre-production the casting, the table reads, all the paperwork. And then once all of that is completed, the continuity and just piecing everything together, that's where the really, really hard work comes in. So I kind of learned a lot of the behind the scenes things because it's fun to be in front of the camera and it looks like it's so much fun and it's so easy. And even my son, when he's on set, he does it like five or six times and he's like, he's ready to go. He doesn't, you know, there's, this angle, that angle, the wide shot and turn the camera around and all that stuff. So a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize how hard it is and how much work and sacrifice goes into these wonderful productions that we see every day. That's very interesting you say that, Roche, because a lot of times, you know, you all have to put them, you have to put a message in a mess. 
it's a mess there and you all make it into a message. So editors, um, my hats go off to you because you all do a fascinating job in terms of making things get beautiful. Um, now, Mackenzie, um, you were saying before we got online that a lot of people told you to not do it or to give up on your dream or was very discouraging to you. How were you able to overcome that? Well, like I said, first of all, God gave it to me. So I, I knew that right off the top. But then, you know, the first thing I did was uh, uh, you know, I, skate, I roller skate. So roll bounce came in and uh, I was an extra on that. And uh, they kept on picking me, pe picking me. So people kept calling me Hollywood. So it was confirming what God was saying to me. But I was on set and I was like, man, you know, I'm just close to speaking. I want to speak and work. So I start like, like, uh, excuse me, but I, I start, I start taking classes myself. Like Rochelle, I take, I start taking classes and uh, went to New York, took some classes. Uh, you know, just got really serious about it, and uh, you know, it, it paid off. And, and and I started doing. First of all, I started trying to get a uh, an agent. It was so hard to get, people think it's easy to get an agent, but it's more hard to get an agent than it is to get a role sometimes, man. Mm -hmm. So- No, 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 no. why did you say that, Mackenzie? What were the agents telling you? Well, we got somebody that looked like you. They, sometimes you wouldn't even get in the door because they'd be like, oh, we got somebody look at like you, uh, come back, uh, whatever. I miss sometimes, I, I took it, you know, because I thought, because I, I've done a lot of independent stuff, I thought I, you know, was ready. So I took took advantage of it a little bit. I wasn't really prepared myself. So some of that's my blame too. But so the next time I went in there, I was ready with my monologue and I went in there and I nailed it. And you know, the rest is history from there. You know. Now, now, now Roche, um, is there do you feel there's a difference with being an actress as a woman and being an actor as a man in terms of getting roles? Do you feel that it's tougher as a woman, tougher as a man? How do you feel that about that? No, I don't feel that it's tougher um, based on your gender, but like Mackenzie said, it was hard to get an agent. So when I was in Chicago and I was stand in for Kerry Washington on Save the Last Dance and I went to LA green as all outdoors, like, yes, I want to be an actress. I'm going to get an agent. I'm going to audition. And the first thing that happened was, like he said, you go into these agencies and they look at me and they just shake their head and say, we have enough of your type. So at the time, my type was like Mia Long, Sanaa Lathan, Carrie Washington, all these wonderful, talented women that's booking. So here I come from Chicago, fresh off the boat. They wasn't trying to see me. So I signed up with Central Casting and did background work. And that's when the favor came in. Like favor came unbelievably on the set of Moesha, I look at episodes now and I see myself all like I'm featured. They put me in the Jet magazine, sitting on the couch, looking up at Moesha as she's looking down at me. Like that was the one of the centerpieces in the Jet magazine. Then from Moesha, the Parkers, same thing. I'm looking at all these episodes with Nikki Parker and Kim Parker. And I'm like right front and center. But like, as Mackenzie said, I want to speak and roll. So that's when I started like getting more into the classes, the workshops, and just speaking to people and saying, hey, I'm Roche, I'm from Chicago, I want to be an actress, what do I need to do? And from that, they would like give me more information and they started calling me Shy town So that's when I stuck with the Roche Shy town Ah, okay, revelation this okay. evening. Thanks for clearing yeah. that up for us. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 let me ask you a question. Now, this is going to be for both of you, but we'll start off with you, Mackenzie. So Mackenzie, um, in the industry, um, how were you able to deal with rejection? Now, for example, starting off late at 37 years old, um, you probably weren't accustomed to getting rejected because you were new to the industry, but how were you able to uh, deal with all the no's um, starting out? Well, I keep, I keep going back to this. Like I said, God put me here. So just because I didn't get this don't mean I should give up because he, he tested me too. He he asked me, did I want this? You know, and and even like uh, I used to when I first started, I used to just get like small speaking roles. 
I just say two words at the end of a play and my mom was calling me, where you at, where you at, when you gonna come out? I'm like, mom, quit calling me, I'm gonna be out in the, on the third set, you know, about in four hours, I'll be out. Come out four hours, say one word. So I asked God, like, give me, uh, please Lord, please give me uh, something. So my first big lead role was uh, August Wilson play by uh, that uh, I met through Dion Hawkins. And it was like, she said nine people quit. I was like, how can somebody quit a lead role? When I saw all the, all the lines that I had to learn, I was like, kind of kind of no wonder they quit. But then I was like, God was like, hey, you asked for it, now what you gonna do? Now, I only got three weeks to learn, just like uh, uh, Seven Shades. I ain't got but three weeks to learn this, but God, I said, what you gonna do? I'm working at the post office. I'm walking down the street. I'm in the mail room. I'm learning these lines. I'm learning them and I'm learning them because I, I, I got to do what I asked for. And, and I, you know, you I know, just believe in myself. And, and like, at, even, even there, this lady came and she said, because I had to, I had to do a, another August Wilson play and this lady, she said, I never come to any plays like this. I only go to the good men and stuff like that. But my niece insisted I come. But I wish everybody could have saw you because you deserve the Oscar. Those are kind of, those are the things that make me, I don't, you know, I get, I know how I do by the audience response. I don't need to guess. I, I know by the audience. When the audience tell me I did good, then I know I did good. Now, now McKenzie, is it, is it anywhere we can see your performance? Is it on YouTube? Where can we see your performance? I got uh, stuff on YouTube. I got a lot of stuff on my, uh, uh, I got a fan page that uh, besides my uh, Facebook page, uh, Instagram, you know, on that. But, uh, and then IMDB, you can see stuff on there. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, my, my best, uh, my first and best, uh, uh, what's that? Um, extra. I meet the Browns every time y'all see me. The Browns, y'all see the crackhead go get the crack before he gets shot. That's me. <laughs> like, I didn't know that was you. That's me. And then you also were playing a homeless man. We're going to talk about that in one second. Um, on the shy, we also have footage of that. You can see it on your monitor in a moment of him playing a homeless man. Boy, he made you made me want to give you some money. He really killed that role. <laughs> now, for you, Roche, um. How were you able to deal with the rejections in the industry? Uh, prayer and just knowing that just because I wasn't picked in that moment that delay does not mean denied. And you just keep going, just keep going. And I have to keep referencing back to my son. It was a, a moment when he was getting way more auditions than me. It got to the point where I would tell him, okay, Roshan, you have an audition. And he's like, where? And I told him where, because everybody in Chicago knows Claire Simon. And he's like, well, I'm not going back to that lady. She didn't pick me the last time. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, you are. Because sometimes it may be, maybe you were too tall or maybe, you know, whatever the reason may be, but because they're calling you back is something that they like. So you have to keep going and just praying and just knowing that the moment was going to be my moment for the taking because it was in me. Every time I went to sleep, it was in me. Every time I'm at a nine to five job, all I'm thinking about is being on set. So I said, okay, I know if God is putting this in my heart, my spirit, my passion, I, I have to be successful at it. So I don't wanna stop before my breakthrough comes. And a lot Very of people good. give up and you shouldn't give up because again, I look at a lot of documentaries like inside the actor's studio, the true Hollywood report, all of that stuff. And you will see over and over how these actors, models, everyone was rejected, rejected. Tyra Banks was rejected so much, but all it takes is one yes. That's oh it. my goodness, so, now, now, now you're preaching. Now you're preaching, very good. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to two illustrious actors, uh, Mackenzie Holmes in Chicago, um, he, he he has a smile on his face, but he's hurting like me because the Bears lost and they lost bad. Yeah. So I get it, but he's holding it together. As well as Roche, who is in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, who um, 
is a native child of Chicago, but they stopped by the Sherrard Show to give a little time today. Now, the lines are blowing up. People have so many questions. We'll get to your questions in a minute. Believe you me, I know you have a tons of them for them. But I want to throw this question to both of you all. First of all, to you, Roche. Now, Roche, you recently um, moved to Atlanta. Did you feel that you've outgrown Chicago or you just wanted to go to Greater Pastures or you had an opportunity you couldn't resist a, a turn down in Atlanta? It was a little bit of both. Um, the prayer and just applying for different positions and seeing that Atlanta was a little bit more open um, as far as auditioning and production than Chicago. And I just felt that it was the time. Like Atlanta, look at Tyler Perry's studio. Like there's so many more productions that's going on here in Atlanta. Although I love Chicago and it doesn't hurt that the weather is a little bit nicer here. And I lived in Atlanta before for two years. So I'm a little bit familiar with it. I have a lot of family, friends all over Atlanta and I just continue to pray on it. And doors started opening. I started receiving job offers and it was just a matter of when are you gonna go? When my son being out of school, I'm like, okay, he can still go online. We can leave. He don't have to be in Chicago or we can just transfer him here because I'm in Alpharetta, Georgia. And I wanted to make sure that I left before the winter really hit. So it's just that step out on faith and just asking God and just allowing him to just be in control and trusting in him. So beautiful, beautiful. Now, now, Roche, um, you were speaking about your um, two companies that you you had. First of all, Dakota TV. Tell us a little bit about Dakota TV. Yes, Dakota TV. The CEO is Kayla Dakota. Very nice lady that I worked with in Chicago years ago. Um, she posted that she was, you know, having her own network on Roku. And I congratulated her. And she's like, oh my God, Roche, no, you have to be on it. You have to be on my team. So it's myself, Dakota, Kendrisa, Felice, Portia, and May, six women of color who are all so talented. We bring a lot to the table. We're all positive. We are all go-getters. We're very supportive of each other. And I'm the creative director. We just launched on Wednesday, like this past Wednesday. So anyone that wants to send any content, documentaries, films, videos. You can go to watch Dakota TV on Roku and just submit your information. Also, VXV Management. They are founded in New York as well as LA, but they have a Atlanta division and they were looking for a talent scout. So when I saw that, I applied for it. And last week, like right before I decided like to really go to Atlanta, that was just an extra push, knowing that I had a job in the Atlanta area. Wow, you, you all got so many things working. So um, what does someone have to do if they want to be considered for being managed by um, the company you're with now? VXP. VXP. Yes. yes, the main thing, make sure you are prepared. Don't send me messages saying you want to be an actor, you want to be a singer if you do not have a reel or some type of MP3 audio that's professionally mixed. You need to have a headshot, you need to have a resume, something that we can reference the other scouts to so that they can see your work. If you have professional photos, if you're a model or, or tear sheets, like you really have to make sure that you're ready. And once you know that you're ready, you can email me, Roche Chi-Town at vxvmanagement.com. And then we'll go from there. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a businesswoman. She's a mogul. You see mm -hmm. how she's sitting there? Only moguls sit like that. You see that? <laughs> she's ready. She's ready. <laughs> now, now, Mackenzie, you're still in Chi-Town. And after the Bears getting whooped like that, it's hard to even stay. But tell me, are you planning on um, staying in Chicago? Or are you going to be um, coming out to Atlanta, New York, LA? What is your plan? Well, uh, now that I do have a base, I, I could make some moves. Uh, but I, I was trying to see, because of so many things were here, I felt like uh, this became uh, Hollywood now because we got Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, all those things. Uh, the shy was here. 
um, you know, Transformers, all that stuff was here. So I was like, uh, why leave when everything is starting to come here? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I do have ideas to, to why well, I like to go to New York or California. Those are places that I would like to go. Um, and I could go to Atlanta as well because of my cousin stay down there. I was thinking about that as well. But uh, I just been here, uh, just making a base, you know, kind of kind of take care of my mother as well too, and my daughter and granddaughter here. So um, trying to retire from this post office, and uh, you know, so I'm not a, it, like in a rush, you know. It's, when it comes, I'm just happy. When it doesn't, I'll be like, okay, I can rest. You know what I'm saying? And, and do other things because I, I spent my whole life just doing a lot of independent stuff, not going on vacation, being available for everything that I missed out on a lot of my life. And so once I start getting more comfortable in this thing, I start, you know, turning down a few things and, you know, trying to get me some rest here sometimes, you know, and it's trying to enjoy life, you know. Like very that. good, very good. And it looked like you're really enjoying life, um, actually. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is time for our question segment. We have a lot of questions um, from our audience for you. Now, this is first for you, Mackenzie. Okay. This is Jonathan. Jonathan from Madison, Wisconsin. Jonathan says you look cleaner. <laughs> you dressed up clean, looking like you're about to go on an audition. His question is, what kind of advice would you give someone in a small town like Madison, who's trying to make it in LA, Atlanta, New York. What kind of advice? Well, uh, while you're there, I mean, I always say, you know, doing independent stuff is like uh, it's like practicing. You know, you always have to practice your craft. So if you say you're interested, you know, and you see some of these uh, independent uh, guys doing some film, go audition for them. And it'll tell you whether you want to be in this thing too, because you're going to find out it's it's a lot of work. It ain't it ain't just saying no lines. It could be all day. It could be shots here. You could be in the cold. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. And so you 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 got to see what you're going you want to do. But like I said, you're in a small town, and if you're not planning on moving away soon, I say while you're there, you know, get you some practice, put some things on, get your resume built. You know, with some little things like that. You know, get your little resume. You know. Very good, Jonathan. We appreciate your question. We appreciate your answer, Mackenzie. Okay, Roche, this is for you. This is for Luis. Luis in Baton Rouge. She says you look absolutely stunning. She loves your necklace. And her question to you is, how does a woman preserve herself in the industry and not be known for who she's been with and more about her talent? Whoa, okay. Thank you, Louise. Um, this necklace, necklace was actually made by a Chicago native because I love to support my Chicago people. Danielle Carroll uh, makes jewelry. Um, to preserve yourself, you just have to know that this is a business. So be professional at all times. I don't care how attractive the co-star or whoever may be. This is a job. This is a profession. You're going in there to do your job. That's all. That's it. You don't need to be like talking after work or going out for drinks or whatever. So just make sure that you keep your focus on your work as far as the singing or acting or modeling or whatever it is. And don't proposition yourself for any other foolishness. Very good answer. Boy, you hear that? Boy, that's very good, Luis. That was very spot good. dead on. Excellent. Now, this question is for both of you all. Now, this is from Adam from Virginia, and we'll throw it to you first, Mackenzie. His question is, what was the toughest thing you ever had to deal with in the industry? Uh, well, the toughest thing is rejection, of course. You know, when you you, you feel like, you know, that you know, you you study, you did all the work and everything, and this is your 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 thing, and you go in there and you do it, and you see that you see you did a good job, but then you don't get a call, or you get a second call, and the rejection probably is the is the, the, the toughest thing, you know, uh, trying to move on to the next. When once you get rejected, it's, it's kind of hard to move on, you know, but you got to move on to the next one and, and and look at it like well. 
they just wanted somebody tall or they wanted, or, you know, but I was close, they was in, inconsiderate of me. So they know me now. So you gotta try to find some kind of positive out of the whole situation. Very good. What about you, Roche? What was the, one of the toughest things you ever had to deal with in the industry? Um, the toughest thing for me, not, it's not the rejection, it's some people's attitudes on set. Um, we have to remember that everyone is human and everyone is there to do a job. So I don't like when people talk down to certain people or are just not friendly or helpful when they know that they can be. But, but, but some people feel like for background in particular, because I've been on set as first team and I've also been on set as just a regular background artist. So I don't like to see how some people treat some of the background people. Very good. That's correct. That is correct. Um, this is an interesting industry because you can be high on a hog one day and fat on your back the next. It doesn't take long to become an has been, and I don't like bad attitude, but you see it more often right. than you don't, especially mm -hmm. in these big time gigs. Very good answer. All right, you have a time for a couple more questions, you two? Yes. Yeah, bring them on. This yes. is this is cool. Okay, very good. Very good. All right, this is from Daniel from Indiana. And again, this is from both of you all. Um, his question is, this is a good one. His question is, when do you know, or when, when is it that you've done enough extra work and you should start trying to transition to speaking roles? Okay, I'll start with you, Roche. When you are able to really understand the technical things that go on in the background, and when you're background, that's the best job. It's like a paid internship. So when you're background, you should really be watching the actors. You should be watching the directors and how they communicate and what they're looking for and what they're trying to get out of the talent. So when you start really going in as a background, but you're really paying attention to all of that and soaking up all of that, then you should start be considerate of putting yourself out to audition. And again, like Mackenzie said, learning monologues, going to workshops and classes and just really taking it seriously. Very good. Mackenzie, what, what do you have to add to it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm like her. Uh, I've learned a lot as a background, you know, which helped me when I first got my first role, I wasn't even nervous because they was like, uh, Mackenzie, start on one and then uh, on action, go to your one, go back to your two. I, I knew all that, I knew all the lingo. And I learned all that from being a, a background. And, uh, you know, what made me quit as a background is because, first of all, like she said, background, you are actor too. And mm -hmm. I, the reason I got picked as an, uh, a background, I started getting more featured because I knew what the scene was about. And so when they come in the room, look for somebody, if it's something, if it's a scene where we gotta be angry. So I'm when they come in the room, I'm looking angry. I ain't telling nobody my secret, but I'm looking angry. And so they be like, you, come here. And so, you know, so if you, you understand what's going on and be an actor as a background person too, as well. But then like, like I said, you know, I started feeling like, you know, first of all, I was so close to seeing myself on there and I'm seeing them getting paid and I'm not getting paid. And I'm right there featured. I need to say something. So, uh, in other words, in order for me to say something, I need to take me some classes and, and get me an agent. You know what I'm saying? And uh, those are things you need to do. Get you an agent. Get you an agent. Take you some classes. And uh, because if you don't get no agent, that's you know they have some open calls, but you're gonna be less getting auditions that way. So get you an agent. Take it serious you know, do all the work, come in, like she said, with, even with her business, you have to be prepared when you come in here. Don't just come here uh, without your headshots and resume and, and, and a monologue. I'm like, you don't have a monologue? Who doesn't have a monologue? You, that means you're not serious. Come on, <laughs> I got good. quite a few. I got two, two more questions for you. This is a very good one. This is from Loretta from Dallas. Now, Loretta's asking the question and it's more of a comment as well. First of all, congratulations on what you all are doing. She's so proud to see African-Americans doing their um, on a national platform, doing big things in the industry, continue doing what you're doing. She wishes you continued success. Now her question is, everyone says they will never change when they get money, but what is it, uh, how can you 
promise or guarantee that you won't change once you start making <laughs> 20 million a film. Let's start with you, Roche. <laughs> I will not change, but I will make sure that I'm very careful about the company that I keep and who I allow to be within my circle. So it's not that you change or you say you're not going to change. Sometimes you need to change for the better, for the situation, because once your territory has increased, you this is your brand, like this is your image and this is your life. You have to protect that at all costs. So you can't go to the same places and hang out with the same people and do the same things that you know that you may have been doing in the past. So change is not bad. You know, I mean, you can still be a great person and and caring and helpful and you know, even open the door for other people to come in, but don't get taken advantage of and don't put yourself out there where things can be taken away because things can be taken away. Very good, very good. And Mackenzie, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I mean, she said everything, but I, I like to add on that, uh, you know, since I've been in this business, uh, I've changed, you know, I've changed for the better. And, uh, you know, and that meant getting rid of some people and that, so, of course, I'm going to change. I'm definitely going to change, uh, change my situation, change my thought, change uh, how I think about business. Uh, and a lot of people are not going to like that. And they don't even like it. And I even made it all the way. And so I can't really think about how they think about it. If I need to make a change, I just need to make a change. And that's just it. Very good. Very good. As long as I don't be ignorant and, and Dis disrespectful to other people like that, you know. Very good. Well, um, I, I absolutely agree with what you're all saying because um, many times you don't even have a time to change before people start changing around you. Before you get home with the check, they see you receive that $20 million check. All of a sudden, you can't get a time to return that phone call. Now they want to say, hey, you think you're better than us because you got $20 million. No, I didn't get a chance to call you back. But like you said, Roche, you need to rise above it. When God improves your situation, you need to rise and, and raise your game up because there is a saying that says, if you want to soar with the eagles, you need to stop hanging around turkeys. Is that correct? Yep. And, and so many people feel entitled. They feel entitled. Like I have worked so hard to get to where I'm at and have made so many sacrifices and had so many doors closed and even family members or friends like, oh, you still doing background? You know, like it's just so much that goes with being in this wonderful world of entertainment that we love so much. That is correct. Um, now, um, this question is from me. My question to you all is that, um, first of all, Roche, what do you have uh, upcoming? You're very busy with the two businesses. You have your films and things like that. But what are some of the things your fans can look forward to seeing you in? Well, we're looking forward to doing the sequel to my two productions that I have out, um, Cutting It Close as well as hashtag pink panties. Don't get your panties in a bunch. A pink panty is a drink. So the, the whole part of the project is friends and relationships. And what happens when we start drinking a little bit, things start coming out. And I had to think of a name of a drink that was kind of catchy. Um, and then just working more on my craft. Now that I'm here in Atlanta, I'm gonna, you know, try to get on some more shows as far as auditioning and just growing with uh, my productions. Very good, very good. And you, Mackenzie, I know we are working on the Seven Shades together, um, but yeah. what other are some of the things you have working that you have in the pipeline as well, sir? Well, I'm definitely taking a good child lessons, playing left-handed, uh, trying to be a triple threat and trying to be ready to uh, play Jimi Hendrix one day so that, <laughs> and uh, also, you know, while I'm waiting to uh, do uh, stuff through the agent, I'm still doing independent stuff. So uh, I'm playing a uh, 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 hitman in uh, Drill City, you know, uh, uh, ex Marine, uh, and so I'm a hitman in that. And then also, I'm playing uh, another uh, independent movie. I'm playing the devil. So. Wow. I'm really looking forward to that one right there. I wow. did an audition and they loved the audition. So congratulations. I'm looking forward so, to really, you know. 
So yeah. Mackenzie, when you're out on the date and that woman says, you're nothing but a devil, you can agree with it now because you played. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was a doctor. I played one. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, we have two more questions and then we'll let you all get out of here. We're just about out of time. But um, one is uh, very simple. The fans want to know where they can keep up with what you got going on, reach out to you, fan mail, et cetera. We'll start with you, Mackenzie. Okay, I'm on... Uh... Uh, Facebook, I'm uh, Mackenzie Holmes. Uh, Instagram, I'm Mackenzie Holmes Mac Ten. Uh, I'm and Twitter, I'm Mackenzie Holmes One. So it's on your monitor. Me on those, and, a, and a fan page. I have a lot of stuff. YouTube, mm -hmm. all that. IMDb, all that. You can catch now, Mackenzie, you're the only guy I know that has a separate account for the stalkers. Is that correct? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you got, you got to. <laughs> I figured that out as well. Now, Roche, what about you? What is your um, information for your fans to keep in contact with you? Yes, everyone can be in touch with me as Roche Chi-Town. That's my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. My website is rochechitown.com. And my email address is rochechitown at gmail. So everything is Roche Chi-Town. Well, there you and have I'm it, ladies and gentlemen. Roku. Excellent. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. These two very busy individuals are doing such big things. I hope when um, they'll have another enough time in, in the future to stop by the Sherrard Show again, because we absolutely enjoyed them. Sorry we couldn't get to all the questions, but you can always email them or even email me at Essence Television Network at gmail.com. It's right on your monitor, Essence Television Network at gmail.com if you have any questions or concerns. And on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we have Mr. Mr. Master P is going to be stopping by the Sherrod Show, talking right. about how he's given his, in, his inheritance to his nephew to carry on his business and everything. You'll hear about it on the Sherrod Show. In the meantime, have a wonderful Sunday, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Be safe, everybody.